All right. Today is Saturday, May 27th. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Hope everybody's enjoying the time off. But folks, we have a quick market discussion here for you. You see, when we entered this year, we did so in a negative tone. Inflation is too high. The Fed is raising rates to take inflation down. The macroeconomic environment is deteriorating. And we started to see a lot of layoffs in the technology sector. But then came the savior, which is AI. Once we got the news that Microsoft bought ChatGPT, all of a sudden we have a new mania, a new gold rush. And the premise of this mania and this gold rush is AI will increase efficiency, meaning companies will need less employees and less spending in the future. And it will also increase spending and revenues for a huge swath of companies in the stock market. And a lot of investors assume that this is going to cancel whatever the Federal Reserve is doing with QT and raising rates and uh, inflation doesn't matter anymore because we have AI and AI will solve it all. And then the focus shifted from AI to oh, inflation is revving higher again. This is back in February of this year and we saw stocks going down. And then came the Silicon Valley Bank collapse. And we thought, whoops, this could be the beginning of the financial crisis, a replay of what happened back in 2008. But the market read it differently. The market read the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and the financial crisis as a green light for the Fed to pause or end their tightening campaign of the monetary policy. And this is supposed to be good for stocks. And we saw a revival of the mania. Yet we stalled for a few weeks, didn't move anywhere. Until, of course, this week, NVIDIA came out with its revenue guidance, and they gave us an outlook what the AI mania actually looks like. They gave us a tangible number that we can pin as a standard, and then look through the market and say, okay, what makes sense and what doesn't. And this initiated a gold rush once again. The AI mania is now reaching the exuberance slash the absurdity stage. All of a sudden, the uh, analysts, the Johnny-come-latelys, of course, raising prices all of a sudden, and they're going crazy. Now they say NVIDIA 500, 600. The company should be valued more than Tesla, more than Amazon, and perhaps maybe more than Alphabet and Microsoft, and soon enough, maybe more than Apple. This is the absurdity stage. And of course, if you happen to be a money manager, you know what happened this week. Your clients been calling you nonstop. Get me on AI. Buy NVIDIA now. Find the next NVIDIA. And therefore, the managers, despite knowing that this is really dangerous, and the clients want to buy at the top now, they held their noses and they bought NVIDIA and they bought a bunch of other chip stocks and other AI-related stocks. And we continue to see this narrow breadth in the stock market. The rest of the market is crashing, except the AI mania stocks. But at some point, we're going to start to ask questions. And some of these questions are number one. In any mania, in any hype or bubble cycle, there are winners and there are losers. And right now, the market assumes that every player that is engaged in any AI is a winner, not a loser. We have yet to find the losers, except maybe Intel. I mean, Intel has been a loser for a long time, so there's that. But we have also yet to ask the question, in any war, which... AI is, if it is indeed a hype and a bubble, it's a war. In any war, there are the players who are engaged in that war. You want to avoid investing in these stocks. And the reason is their margins are going to get crushed as they compete on who is going to be the king of AI. And then there are the suppliers of the war. As uh, legendary investor Peter Lynch taught us, they're called the bullet stocks. They're the ones that provide the bullets for the players engaged in this war. And the market's assumption right now is chips, chip manufacturers, designers, these are the bullet stacks. And you're going to buy all of them, no exceptions, no thinking involved at all, at least right now. But we're going to start to ask these questions. Just because Google said AI or Microsoft said AI, assuming the AI hype is right and real, Shouldn't these two companies be at war with each other? Google versus Microsoft, who's going to be the king of AI? And that means their expenses will rise dramatically. And as a result, their margins will get worse. So are they really investable just because they said AI? This is evidence that this is a mania hype with very little thinking involved. Number two, given the macroeconomic situation of companies cutting costs, the credit tightening, the Fed raising rates and tightening the monetary policy, given all of that, is the recent revenue guidance by NVIDIA even real or realistic? 
Is it achievable? A reminder, the company produced about $7.2 billion in revenues in the first quarter of this year. The highest revenue number that the company has ever achieved in its history was about $8 billion last year. Now the company is projecting that in this quarter, Q2 of this year, the revenues will jump from $7 billion to $11 billion plus or minus 2%. A huge leap. And because of this projection, all of a sudden investors were scrambling this week. If NVIDIA is upping their revenue guidance by this much, then shouldn't Taiwan Semi also upgrade their revenue guidance? Shouldn't AMD, AMAT, ASML? Everybody, anybody who's engaged in the AI arena should have a huge revision in their prior earnings estimates. And now investors are scrambling ahead of that, ahead of these announcements of, oh, we're revising our revenue guidance higher because of NVIDIA. Investors are buying these stocks ahead of time in anticipation of that. Wait a minute, if NVIDIA is going to increase their revenues from 7 billion to 11 billion in a single quarter. Shouldn't AMD, for example, have the same? But the question that we should be asking in reality, is the projection by NVIDIA achievable, realistic, based on facts and forecasts, actual orders, or is it based on a prediction by the CEO and the management aka a fantasy because if that is the case then all what we've seen this week so far will be reversed in the most brutal fashion so how about we do some investigation here and see whether the projection by nvidia actually adds up or not <laughs> We start with the revenue, as you can see. Year on year, the revenues are down about $1.1 billion. And of course, you might ask, wait a minute, why would the stock pop 30% uh, in a single week when the revenues are down year on year? Here it is. It's all about the revenue guidance. They say revenue is expected to be $11 billion, plus or minus 2%. And this is not for the year, folks. This is for this upcoming quarter. Now, they also say that GAAP and non-GAAP operating expenses are expected to be approximately $2.71 billion and $1.9 billion, respectively. Now, this is not a huge bump from the expenses they have this quarter. So what's going on here? They see massive leap forward in revenues, but with very little increase in expenses. Something doesn't add up here. If you're going to expand your revenues dramatically, your expenses should go higher too because there is a cost in manufacturing, designing all of these new chips. Unless, of course, it's a pricing story. We'll talk about that by the end of the video. And if it is, then it's a transitory bump. Just keep that in mind. And here's what they say. The first quarter revenue was a record for data centers, because this is what really matters when it comes to AI. $4.28 billion, up 14% year on year, and up 18% from the previous quarter. And they talk about, of course, their cloud platforms, but most importantly, this new chip that everybody wants to buy. So who's buying? Who's actually generating the leap from $7 billion to $11 billion in a single quarter? NVIDIA says Google Cloud. And they also say, if you read this, you can pause it, you can read it for yourself. The NVIDIA H100, this is the most important chip. They say Amazon Web Services, Google, we talked about that, Microsoft Azure, and Oracle cloud infrastructure they also talked about a partnership with ServiceNow. they talked about uh, medronic they talked about dell technologies all of these are future projects so we have a few names here that we can play with let's go back to the investigation board if nvidia sees massive increase in revenues huge orders coming in then we know that nvidia is the designer of these chips they're not really the manufacturers they're not really the suppliers so if what they're projecting is real we should see the supplier in this case taiwan semiconductor manufacturing whatever tsmc we should see a huge rise in their outlook too because all of these orders that nvidia is receiving tsmc will be the manufacturer of these chips likewise if nvidia is seeing this huge massive increase in revenues in a single quarter somebody's paying for that so who's paying is it microsoft is it google it's amazon medronic service now oracle china who's paying because we know all in all if you look at the worldwide semiconductor revenues they're down big year on year down almost 21 percent and the reason is we know what's going on with the economy china slowing down the fed is raising rates the consumer is getting crushed corporations are reducing spending and therefore the demand for semiconductors is going down not to mention, of course, the inventory glut that all of these companies have. When we look at PC shipments, down big in 2022. When we look at other companies that reported this quarter, same quarter as NVIDIA, nobody said that they're seeing massive increased tsunami in uh, orders. Nobody said that at all, with the exception of NVIDIA. Matter of fact, Samsung reported a loss in the first quarter. Their operating profits are the lowest in years. When we look at Micron, they've also reported a revenue decline year on year in the first quarter of this year. We look at Applied Materials. 
Another important name in the infrastructure of semiconductors. If we're seeing a massive tsunami of orders and huge revenue left in the semiconductor industry, we should see it in this name. We're not seeing it yet. The revenue growth is actually down. If you looked at the earnings from applied materials, they're down. Negative sales growth. And the same goes for Dutch semiconductor maker ASML, another provider for NVIDIA. If we're seeing this huge tsunami of orders, it's not showing up in ASML. They say order values actually went down to the lowest level since 2020. If we say, oh, China is the buyer of all of these chips, then how do you explain the fact that Taiwan's chip shipments to China is actually dropping like a rock? at four years low. Matter of fact, the industrial output for Taiwan, we know that pretty much the Taiwanese economy depends on one company, which is Taiwan Semi. The year-on-year -year output is actually negative. So we're not seeing any increase in orders in any of these leading indicators, any of these other chip companies. But let's dig more. When we look at Taiwan Semi's earnings for the last quarter. And mind you, this report came out March 31st. The revenues are down quarter over quarter by 18.7%. Their expenses, if we have a huge order that came out of NVIDIA, for example, we should see something, an increase in expenses at least to cope for that. The expenses are down 14.3%. So it's a company that's seeing contracting revenues, and as a result, they're reducing their expenses, not increasing. Well, maybe Taiwan delivered something, but they didn't get paid for. Not yet, at least. So we have to look at account receivables. That's actually down 36% quarter on quarter. If there is a huge order for AI chips, which uses the 5 nanometer technology, we should see increase in revenues from this segment for Taiwan Semi. But this is not what we got in the latest report by the company. And now you might say, but Maverick, maybe the revenues all in all are down because of PC or smartphones. But if you segment the revenues, you might see an increase in data centers and orders for these AI chips. When we do that, all segments for Taiwan Semi actually down. We're not talking year on year. We're talking quarter over quarter, sequential, with exception of automotive. So no orders, no increase at all. Nothing. Maybe something in the cash flow says that they got new slew of orders. We don't see that at all. Free cash flow is actually down quarter over quarter, down year on year. And again, if NVIDIA is projecting this huge leap in revenues from 7 billion to 11 billion in a single quarter, then the manufacturer of these chips should see the same. But according to the latest report for the same quarter that NVIDIA just reported, TSMC says that revenue will be between 15.2 billion and 16 billion for the next quarter. Well, what does that mean? It means a 6.7% quarterly decline. Once again, decline, not an increase. So NVIDIA says we're gonna see at least $4 billion worth of new orders in this quarter coming. The manufacturer of NVIDIA's chips says we don't see nothing. We see a decline in revenues of 6.7%. So something doesn't add up here. Now let's look at the suspect itself, NVIDIA. If NVIDIA is seeing this massive increase in revenues and orders, then the sister company of NVIDIA, AMD, should see the same. That is a reasonable assumption. Now let's take a look at AMD's uh, numbers and see what's going on. Revenues down 9% year on year. So we're not seeing any new orders here, at least in the first quarter of this year. We'll look at net revenues year on year for data centers. Because you might say, hey, maybe gaming is down, but what about data centers? That's where AI is. Sales are actually flat, and the operating income is down 65% year on year. But hey, Maverick, maybe it's something in their account receivables, something they delivered, they did not get paid yet, it's not showing in revenues. When we do that, we see that accounts receivable actually down 2% year on year. And by the way, their inventory is already up 12%. So either they have a glut, or they've already stacked a bunch of chips ready to go. And that's already accounted for. There is no huge increase that's going to happen suddenly. When we look at the outlook for the company, Q2 23, the same quarter that NVIDIA is expecting a huge leap from $7 billion to $11 billion in revenues. Well, the sister company of NVIDIA, AMD, says, no, 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 no. We're going to see revenues at $5.3 billion, up or minus $300 million, And that is a decrease of 19% year on year. And by the way, this report came out May 2nd. So either AMD is not seeing what NVIDIA is seeing or NVIDIA is lying or NVIDIA got a huge overview order between May 2nd and the time the report came out this week. Now you're starting to see that something doesn't add up here. But let's continue to play the game. Let's look at the demand side. Maybe some of these companies spent uh, $4 billion, an extra $4 billion. That's going to go to NVIDIA. Let's take a look. Microsoft, 
Here's the outlook. And when it comes to the cost of revenue, they say it's going to be oh, up about 2 to 3% in the next quarter. Let's see if that translates to how many billions of dollars. If we look at last year's uh, cost of revenue number and we add the 3%, that's an increase of about $500 million. Now assume all of it goes to NVIDIA, which is insane. It's not real. But even if all of it goes to NVIDIA, we have what? Three and a half billion missing? What about Alphabet, Google? Maybe they have a bunch of money to spare. Now, Google did not give us any guidance at all because they know it's going to be abysmal. But when we look at the revenue growth, it's actually going down dramatically. This is a company that is scrambling to cut costs right now, laying off thousands of employees. But all of a sudden, they're going to spend billions and billions of dollars in a single quarter buying chips from NVIDIA. And if that is the case, then isn't that a negative for Alphabet that their margins are going to get crushed because their revenues are down either way, but their expenses are going to rise dramatically because they're buying all of these chips. Should you really stampede and buy Alphabet stock? Or is it the stock that is involved in the war and should be avoided? See, nobody's thinking right now. Everybody's putting the blindfolds on and just buying anything that says AI. This is how you know that this hype is going to come down crashing like you've never seen before. Amazon, maybe they're buying. Let's see what they got. When we look at the guidance, they say net sales are going to be between 1.27, 1.33 billion, or 133 billion, excuse me, and the growth 5 to 10%, but no details here. Operating income, they give us uh, 2 billion or 5.5 billion. You can fly a jumbo 747 between this range. So that doesn't help at all. It doesn't tell us anything about the expenses. So we have to look at the last earnings report and see what's going on. Is the company ramping up spending? When we do that year on year, you can see that all in all, the company is actually reducing a lot of spending with exception of technology and content. Now, could buying AI chips be under this category? Maybe. So maybe Amazon is buying a bunch of chips. Let's keep an open mind. And what about their account payable? Maybe it increased dramatically and it accounts for upcoming expenses. When we do that, account payables actually down quarter over quarter. So no increase in the first quarter. Can they revise all of this and say, hey, by the way, we're the buyers of all these chips from NVIDIA? That could be the case, but we don't see any evidence if we look at the first quarter's earnings from Amazon. Then the company mentioned Medtronic, which again, if you're chasing the AI hype, how come nobody's showing any love for this company? I mean, it was flying high based on the AI hype. And then they reported earnings and the stock went down crashing. When we look at their latest report, what do we see here? They don't give us really any tangible number that we can say, okay, wow, they're spending another $3 billion in chips all of a sudden. And this report is recent, by the way. It's as recent as you can get. All what we get is this line right here. It says, announced strategic collaboration with NVIDIA to accelerate AI innovation for healthcare. That's really vague. It doesn't me to give us anything tangible. We look at the forecast by the company for revenues. They say it's going to be up four to four and a half percent. And the EPS, it's going to be actually down from this year. But this is really vague. This is for the entire year. It doesn't really give us any specifics, anything we can look at and say, OK, I can see an increase here. I can see an abnormality here. Nothing at all. We will look at their expenses for the last quarter. Anything we can uh, speculate on. If we want to, we can look at research and development expenses. That could be buying AI chips. Who knows? Actually, year on year, that went down. So no indicator here whatsoever that we're seeing a sudden surge of spending by this company in buying AI chips. We look at their cash. It's down a lot year on year. So how are they going to buy all of these chips? Their account payables up a little bit, but nothing major. Nothing that tell us here, watch out, this company is ordering a massive amount of chips. All we have is, oh, we have an upcoming collaboration with NVIDIA. What about ServiceNow? Because that was mentioned and we saw Jensen Wang, the CEO of NVIDIA with the CEO of ServiceNow all together on CNBC pumping their stocks higher. And people are buying ServiceNow stock because it is AI related now. We don't have any specifics, but we got this headline from NVIDIA May 17th. It says ServiceNow and NVIDIA announce partnership to build generative AI. This is the keyword, the buzzword, generative AI across enterprise IT. Now is ServiceNow a huge company that can spare an extra $4 billion worth of spending in a single quarter? Not really. 
if we look at their guidance, they see that the revenues, the subscription revenues will be at about $2 billion. So that's their entire revenue. And they see the operating margin flat. Now, if they're going to increase spending all of a sudden, the operating margin should go down. So we're not seeing anything here that says, or oh, ServiceNow is spending billions of dollars buying chips from NVIDIA. What about Oracle though? Because that's a huge company. Are they in general increasing spending as a company? We look at the latest report by Oracle, when we look at operating expenses, that was actually up over 37% year on year. So this is a company that is increasing spending. Can they continue to do that? The answer is not really, because you look at the net income, it's down 18%. It's negative 18% year on year. So this is a company that has expenses problems to begin with. And if this company is spending on anything, they're spending on corrupting your politics. You got uh, oligarch Larry Allison. He's now spending millions of dollars, not on AI or NVIDIA, on uh, Tim Scott. So he can be your next president. That's how you know Tim Scott's not going to be working for you. He's going to be working for Larry Allison to make sure that he steals more and more and more wealth from this country. But anyhow, if anything, Oracle is not paying NVIDIA. Maybe they're paying a little bit. In reality, NVIDIA is paying Oracle. We got the news recently that NVIDIA chose Oracle cloud infrastructure for the AI services. So NVIDIA paying Oracle for these services. And this is why, here's the article from Forbes, and I agree with it. It says why Oracle is the best best sneaky way to play the NVIDIA earnings shocker. If you're chasing Microsoft and uh, Google and maybe other chip manufacturers that will not benefit at all from this AI hype, you're just speculating with a blindfold on. Oracle, on the other hand, may be a more reasonable play because the stock is actually cheaper when it comes to valuations. And sure, it's going to integrate AI in its platform, but it's also a bullet stock, kind of. It's supplying the bullet supplier. Now, I wouldn't buy the stock right now, even with your money, because if you look at the weekly chart, we have a double top 104.8 and the stock is really overbought right now if you look at the RSI. So we're going to see a pullback generally in the stock market, not just in Oracle. We're going to see a nasty pullback coming because this pullback will be based on the thinking process. Wait a minute. Let's pause. What are we doing here? What are we doing buying uh, NVIDIA at the top right now with our client money? What are we doing speculating and buying all of these chip stocks and AI hypes with the client's money? Sure, we want to secure a bunch of bonuses for Q2. Sure, we want our performances to look good. But what if we're buying at really bad prices? What if these stocks go down and then we have to explain to our clients why we were not more disciplined when they grab the phone crying saying, hey, buy NVIDIA right now now or buy me anything AI because I have FOMO. Why didn't I discipline my client and say, look, where's your rationale? Would you like to chase another hype like the EV hype, like the SPAC hype, like the many countless hypes we got recently? We're not talking about the dot com now. We're talking recently in the last two years. All of them ended badly. And this one's going to end badly, too, because it's based on irrational exuberance and speculation. And now a company just threw out a number with no backing at all. Matter of fact, NVIDIA never gave us a year and guidance. They just predicted that this quarter will have $11 billion worth of revenues. And based on that, we're speculating in a casino right now. But after this pullback happens and we start thinking about it, let's say we get more tangible evidence that this AI main is actually generating increases in revenues and increases in the bottom line, most importantly. And if that is the case, then you got the support zone for Oracle. If it goes down there and then the macro environment looks a little better, and we see the AI main is stabilizing and showing more tangible results. You might want to buy Oracle here, but right now I would not buy it even using my enemy's money. It's just something to keep in mind. So when we go back to the board, okay, the company says we're going to increase revenues from 7 to 11 billion in a single quarter. When did this huge tsunami of orders show up? Because AMD reported May 2nd, we saw nothing at all, at least from AMD's account. Taiwan Semi gave us a quarterly guidance that shows declines in revenues. And all of the other demand companies that are supposed to be buying these AI chips, they're not really showing a massive increase in expenses or talking about increases in expenses in their guidance. If anything, they're cutting expenses. And look, I understand that a lot of investors joined the market recently. 2020, everybody stayed at home, download, downloaded Robinhood and started investing in the stock market. So nobody remembers anything before 2020. Nobody remembers what happened back between 06 to the crash in 09, 08 and how big of a roller coaster that was at the time. When the bears won a little bit, then came the bulls with another hype, another theory that the Fed is going to do this, that the government will do that. And we saw the market recovering and moving higher. 
sharp righties, back and forth, back and forth, until at the end of the day, the main thesis that everybody was aware of played out and the market crashed. Nobody remembers that we've seen these episodes before, especially from a company like NVIDIA. Back in 18, when the stock crashed by 20% in a single day, it happened because the company gave us a rosy guidance like they're giving us right now. And when the moment of truth came out, earnings came out, they couldn't live up to this high bar. And even Jim Cramer came out and said, NVIDIA got it so wrong, no one will trust the CEO for a while. So NVIDIA has done these kind of hypes before. Recently, NVIDIA was fined $5.5 million by the SEC. This is last year, by the way, because they said, oh, our gaming revenue is really healthy and increasing and uh, there's nothing to see here. Well, it turns out the majority of the bump in their gaming revenue is happening due to the cryptomania. And the cryptomania was dying. And investors needed that as a leading indicator to get the hell out of the stock. Of course, it was too late. And here's what you want to watch. You see, Jensen Wong exercised plenty of options recently. And if he start dumping right now, that would be a major red flag. Any NVIDIA executives, if they start dumping right now, major red flag. Why would they dump if the company is going to be a $10 trillion company in, in two years? Why would they dump if revenues are going to expand from 7 to 11 billion, then to 20 billion, then to 50 billion? They're only going to dump if they know they hyped it up too much. It's a pump and dump scheme. They gave us a Fugazi number for the guidance. They pulled the number out of their asses with no backing whatsoever. And they're going to use this pump to cash out and hit the cha-ching button. And if that happens, and then NVIDIA comes out and says, oh, by the way, we're going to do a... <laughs> A guidance revision before the earnings come out. Did we say the revenue is going to be $11 billion? Never mind. It's actually going to be $9 billion or maybe $8 billion. Then the stock will crash 40% in a single day. But the executives cashed out. And that would be one of the major scandals in Wall Street history. But we have to keep an open mind, folks. When a company gives us an insane number like this, we have to look at it and take it seriously. We have to investigate. We have to ask questions. And also keep an open mind that Maybe they're seeing something that we're not seeing. So what would explain the 4 billion question here? It's one of two scenarios, price versus volume. Either they're selling few of these AI chips to few clients, but they're charging an arm and a leg for them. For example, the 4 billion can be explained if they're charging $40,000 a pop for them and they're selling 100,000 chips this quarter. Still a long shot because it should show up in Taiwan semis numbers. 100,000 extra chips, that's a huge order. Or it could be explained by volume. $4 billion sold at 4,000 bucks a piece. That's 1 million chips sold. Which one is the more plausible scenario and explanation? I would say definitely price, not volume. If we're really seeing 1 million chips being produced all of a sudden in a single quarter, all of semiconductors manufacturers should see something happening, but nobody's seeing any thing besides NVIDIA. So we go back, maybe it's the price, maybe it's a smaller order, but they're charging too much. And even if that is the case, how long will they maintain the pricing power before competitors start to eat away their margins? At some point, AMD will compete too, and these prices will go down. All of these are questions that are not being asked right now. All what investors are seeing is, oh, the stock went higher by about 25% in a single week creating value, the 200 billion plus that NVIDIA created in a single week because of this pump is larger than the entire military budget of the country of China. But again, folks, I'd love to hear from you. Do you believe the number provided by NVIDIA or do you think that they're, let's say, bluffing a little bit? They're not going to be able to live to this expectation. And if you say that the number is legit, then is it coming from the pricing power or the volume? Would love to hear from you. What do you think about all of this? Let us know in the comments. But with that, folks, we have reached the conclusion of this video. Hope you enjoyed it and you found it informative. And if you did, return the favor by subscribing, pressing the like button, and the notification bell. And with that, folks, this is all I got for you for now. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I will talk to you again tomorrow. Enjoy the weekend. Mm -hmm. Help him. Why does Wesley need helping? Because he has no strength. I knew it. I knew you were bluffing. I knew he was bluffing.